I recently had the chance to sit down for the second time with the guys from the Copyright Zone, Ed Greenberg and Jack Resnicki, to talk about copyright for photographers. Once that episode aired, somebody hit me up on Twitter and had a great idea. They wanted to see what my workflow is for registering my images with the U.S. Copyright Office. So, this is a special episode of Behind the Shot. Hi, once again, welcome to the Behind the Shot podcast. I'm Steve Brazel. Normally, this is the podcast where we try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots from conception to completion and all the stories and challenges that happen in between. But as I said in the intro, I recently sat down for the second time with Ed Greenberg and Jack Resnicki of the Copyright Zone. Now, if you don't know who they are, check out thecopyrightzone.com. If I were you, I would hit that website all the time. They always have up-to-date information information, great information, where they will also discuss legal cases that happen relating to copyright for photographers. Also, they have a great book. I have it sitting behind me, and it is called The Copyright Zone as well. Copyright for Photographers. Highly recommend that you buy that one as well. So the first episode I did with them was summer of 2017, and we discussed generically copyright for photographers. Great info in there. Head to behindtheshot.tv, scroll back through the episodes, find it, and watch it. But In 2018, the U.S. Copyright Office changed how you register certain types of images. So I recently, at the end of 2018, sat down with them to kind of recap what those changes were. And after I aired it, I heard from a fellow photographer, great guy, by the way, great photographer, Steve Carlson SF, as in San Francisco on Twitter, hit me up and said, your recent episode with the Copyright Zone guys has reminded me that I'd still love to see a blog post from you that details your process for registering photos. Well, Steve, I hope you don't mind. I'm not much of a writer but I can do a video. So here we go. Let's run through how I do the workflow. A couple couple just things to let you know about in advance, though. I've got some of it pre-set up, right? I'm not going to make you sit and watch while images export. I want to try and save you some time. Also, this isn't the way to do it. This is how I do it. Find your own way. If you find a better way, let me know. There are some things people have told me I should be doing that I don't do. Some of them I will start doing and some of them I probably won't start doing, right? The main thing is get out there and register your images. It's more important now than ever. So, and it's it's really, really easy to do. So let's jump over and get started. First of all, this is copyright.gov. This is their website. Our goal is to get to this website, right? We're gonna get to uh, the copyright website where you actually do the registration. So let's walk through how you get here. You go to copyright.gov and in the upper left corner, you'll see register a copyright. When you click that, it will take you to the registration portal. And as you can see, there's a number of different types of things that you can actually register. There's two things here we care about. The button that says log in to the Electronic Copyright Office, ECO, registration system, or the button in the bottom right that says photographs. And if you click photographs, it brings you here. And I want to point out four links here. First of all, this just tells you about how you, co- you know, what you can copyright photography wise. But on the right hand side, there's four links. One of them is a preview of the application process for registering unpublished uh, photos. There's another one, same thing, for published photos. And there's two spreadsheet templates that you can use, put the information in that they require, and actually send those files to them. Plus, of course, at the bottom, there's tips, there's release notes, there's tutorials. This is a great resource. But for now, let's go log in. If you go to the portal and you click log in to ECO, it will bring you here, and I wanna warn you. You will probably get a warning Unless you are one of those people still using Firefox. It's 2018. I know a few, but it will pop up and say this website paraphrasing here is optimized for Firefox. And if you don't use Firefox, it may not operate as expected. I'm using Safari on a Mac. I've never had the world come to an end because I'm using it. If you're using Chrome, as far as I know, it works or Edge or Internet Explorer. I don't know why they optimized it for Firefox, but they did. Create an account and or if you have one, log in and it will bring you here. Well, kind of here. It will actually bring you to whatever your open cases are. I've already pre-selected working cases. I want you to see we don't have one yet. We're going to create one together. And what you start with 
is register a group of photographs on the left-hand side. Read this. Whenever you're doing this for the first couple of times, make sure you know what you're getting into and what you're going to sign that you abide by at the end. And then click Start Registration. Now, this part that we're doing, you don't have to do first, but you'll see why I do shortly. You need to tell it, is it published photographs or unpublished photographs? They are different than what you register them, the way that you register them. I'm going to choose unpublished and then check that you agree. Now, notice if you're choosing unpublished, there are requirements. They must be unpublished. They must be created by the same author. They must have the same copyright claimant, meaning the owner of them. You're limited to 750 pictures. There's a number of them. Read this text so that you know and click continue. And that will bring you to what I consider the actual registration process. There's a number of steps we're going to go through on the left. They're super fast. They're super easy. Why I did this first is the part that's at the top of the screen that says case number. When I set up my Explorer window or Mac OS Finder window, I create a folder to hold each registration and I name it with my name, the job, the year, and the case number. I create a folder to put my thumbnails in of the photos I'm registering. I name it, my name, the case number, the date, and, or excuse me, the, uh, the job title, the date, and the case number. So I need a case number which doesn't exist until you actually come do what we did and create it. Now, all of my templates already have the one dash because it's always there. So I'm just going to highlight the rest of it and copy it. We're going to use that number now to go create a folder structure. I've already done it for us, but you'll get the idea. I'm on a Mac. This is in, in Windows or uh, in Finder on Mac. I've created a folder. This is the folder where I am going to actually store the thumbnails that I export out of Lightroom, and I want to put the case number at the end. This is why it makes it easier to have a case number before you create everything. Otherwise, you will actually have to go in and add the case number to each and every file, and you can be there for quite some time, depending on what you're doing. I've done it for you at this point. Just to let you know, you would create this root folder. You'd create a folder inside it to put your thumbnails. None of this for you would exist yet. We're going to create those now. I've only created them just to speed things up. Okay. Once you have your folder structure done, that's when you're going to move over to Lightroom. In Lightroom, I've got 24 images pre-selected as a sample batch. These are actually all registered already, but I needed something to show you the registration. So on the right hand side under collections, you'll know that notice that I have a collection group called copyright registration. And under that, I have the images that are registered and the images that are to be registered. There's one other thing that I did. When I was first catching up, I had never registered before, and you have to register images from the same creation year. So I actually also in here have a collection for 2008. And under that, I have folders for, or collections, I should say, under, under 2008 for pending or registered. 2009, pending or registered. And I do that for each of the years that I'm going back. It just, for me, it made it a little bit easier to kind of track what I was doing as I was going through catching up and doing the first registrations that I, that I ever did. So let's jump back into Lightroom here. Uh, and let me jump back to the collection. I've got set up of 24 images for this. Also keyword wise, I have a non exporting keyword root called copyright. And under that I have keywords for published and registered. And that's just for me to keep track. These are also non-exporting. That's why they're capital. I capitalize anything that doesn't export. Uh, these are just for me to keep track if an image has been published so that I know if I'm registering it published or unpublished and once they've actually been registered. Do it however you want. That's just, it works for my mind, you know, whatever it is. So here's what you're going to do. <clears throat> however many images you've got, and you're limited to 750, you're going to highlight them all and you're going to export thumbnails that will be zipped and uploaded to the copyright office as proof and documentation. And to do that, you're just going to go to export. I have a preset all ready to go for me that I always use. I resize my long edge 
to 600 pixels, 72 pixels per inch. I sharpen for screen at standard quality. Some people do 500 pixels. It's up to you. The main thing is you want to submit thumbnails that are viewable and understandable and recognizable. Okay, so I do that. At that point, you're going to hit export, choose the folder to export them into, and you're done and you've got your thumbnails. And then you want to zip that folder. So to give you an example, here's the folder. It's got 24 images in it, right? And I right click it and I choose compress. It'll create the zip file for me. Now, one quick little side note here. This only happened once. Probably would have never happened again. I always do on a Mac what you just saw. I use the built-in compression scheme. But one time I submitted that zip file with a registration and got an email back from the case agent saying he couldn't open it. So I zipped it again and I sent it off to him and he couldn't open it. Finally, I downloaded WinZip and I used that and he was able to open it. Everybody I know using a Mac does what I just did and they've never had a problem. That kind of freaked me out because it was a pain. It got to the point so many emails back and forth, he called me. So I have WinZip now. I always zip with WinZip to be safe. But in theory, you just need to get it zipped. That is the main file that you're going to send in with your registration. Okay, let's go back over to Lightroom. The other thing that you need to send is a list of your images, the title of the image if they have a unique title, and the file name. Keep in mind, those can be different, right? In my case, the title of the image and the file name are usually the same. For registration purposes, I have been told that you're better off if somebody goes searching registrations to have Dave Grohl with a blue guitar at Cal Jam, something like that. Uh, I just don't have that much time if I'm registering 750 images to do that. So for that reason, you can and are allowed, the Copyright Office does say, you, you need a title and you need a file name, but they can be the same. So you can use your file name as the title. And here's what you need to do. Highlight all of your images and you need to get this plugin. The plugin will show up under plugin extras and it's called LR Transporter. This is donationware. I think I gave the guy 20 bucks or something like that because this thing is invaluable to me. And uh, it lets you export metadata from your images as a text file and it is fantastic. Go look up LR Transporter. I have some presets done, one for unpublished images, one for published images. And the first box is the actual title of the file that you are going to export. So it's gonna create a text file and I usually will have it be my name, the job name, the year, and then the case number. And this is again why it's handy to have the case number before you start exporting things. My template just has hashtags, but I would actually go in before I export and I'd put the case number here so that everything shows up right. Now this first line is gonna come up later. This is in here for a reason. This is the complete list of photographs for case number. That's a required line. You'll see that in those templates I show you later. This first box is the header info and your column titles. Notice for, for published images, there is a date published column. The second box is what it will loop through for each image. It's gonna do a sequence number. So one, two, three, all the way through 24. The next one it will do, if your image has a specific unique title, it will export the title. If it doesn't, it will export the file name. The third column, it will definitely do the file name. And the fourth column is the date. Now for my case, this is set up from when I was catching up and I'm registering images from 2009 and I don't know what date they were published or month or year they were published. So I can make a logical conclusion that they weren't published before they were created. So in backdating and going back and doing catching up on registrations I'd never done, I just assume the publication date is the original date and time of creation of the photo. And this formatting, what this will do, you'll see it shortly, will create month and year. Okay, they're very picky on the date format. In our case, we're gonna do unpublished photos. That's what you should almost always do. And same thing, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna create the file name that you actually want. Name it whatever you want. In my case, I always put the case number at the very end. Case numbers are always one dash and then a number. I would come in here and I would replace these. This is the header info at the top. It's what I'm gonna get 
at the very top of this text file, and there's going to be three columns, sequence number, title, and file name. Title and file name for me will be the same. Same in the middle box as before, there's just no date information. And then you choose where you want to actually save it and click OK. That's pretty much it. When you're done with that, you're actually completely done in Lightroom at that point. Let's take a look at the files. <clears throat> First of all, this is what the unpublished file looks like. That line at the top that's required, this is the complete list of photographs for this case number. Had I exported this after I had the case number, I wouldn't still have hashtags here. It would already be there. Same with this line here and my group title. I have three columns separated by commas. If you use spreadsheets at all, you'll know if you import a text file that's comma separated, each comma designates another column in the text in, in the spreadsheet. So I have a number, I have a title, and I have a file name, okay? If you were to do the version that is published, it's exactly the same, except you also have month, three-digit month, dash, year. They are picky about their months, so make sure you format them right. So, when you open this in your spreadsheet program, it will look similar to this. I've taken the liberty to format it the way that I would export it, and this is the key. It would have already imported with this case number being in there. Because I preset this up and then I didn't have the case number yet, I have to go add it now. It's nothing hard, but that's why I always create the case number first, okay? These are my 24 files. This is the, this completed line. This is the complete list of photographs for this case number that is required. This one's not required. I just like to keep it in there so that I know what I named the group if I ever look back at this file. Once you have it laid out and formatted the way you want, you can do this in your own spreadsheet or you can use one of their templates. If you use one of their templates, and this is a key distinction, right? You can actually use one of their templates and you can simply, if you want to, send in that spreadsheet file. They do allow that. Or you can take their template and save it off as a PDF. They allow that as well. I prefer a PDF just because it's me, but there's something in my head that says, if I give them a spreadsheet, somebody could theoretically edit it. It's a, you know, they're not gonna most likely do that with a PDF file. I mean, yeah, okay, you could do all kinds of things, but still, uh, I prefer to give a PDF for whatever strange reasons, you know, that I, that I might have. So let's jump back here. I would take this file, and I would say export to PDF, save it in the right folder, and that's the second file you need to send them. So we've got the zip file, we're gonna send them that, and you've got the PDF file, you're gonna send them that. Here's the two text files that I had for samples, and this is the original spreadsheet file that I exported for the PDF. Note the naming, I keep my naming pretty consistent so that I can trace any file to any given job at any point in time. So let's talk about this spreadsheet for a second. When you actually do your registration, you will need to enter the title names, not the file names, the title names. For me, they're the same, they may not be, right? Well, let's look at the templates that you could have downloaded from their website. This is the template for published images. Your titles go here, your File names go here, and your month and year of publication go here. And notice this last column has commas in it. That's key. Let's take a look at the unpublished. Lays out the same. Notice this top line right here. Required. This is the complete list of photographs for and case number. That's why that was in my LR transporter export in my text file and came up at the very top of my spreadsheet when I imported the text file, okay? Down here, we've got the same thing. We have our sequence number, we have our titles, we have our file name, and we have this column with commas. Let me explain what that's used for. I'm gonna go over to my spreadsheet and I'm gonna take all of my titles. I'm gonna copy them. So I've selected one through 24 in column B, okay? When you get over here, I'm gonna paste that into the titles. And notice what it did to column three. It pre-populated column three with the titles and a comma. When you enter these during registration, you need title, comma, title, comma, or 
title carriage return. Commas are, I think, what they prefer. In the middle column, if you were going to submit this file, just like the one I created, you would need all three columns populated properly or all four columns populated properly. Okay, I'm not going to use this file to submit. I've got the PDF that I exported. All I'm going to care about is this last column D. I'm going to need all of these title names that have a comma after them. That's going to be critical to me. So now that we've got that, let's go back and start doing a registration. First thing, let's create a title. The first title that it wants from you is the title of the group as a whole. My vacation pictures from Australia, not each individual photo. I try and keep everything consistent. So let's go grab that same title that I use for everything and we'll paste that in as the title, right? My name, the job number, the date, case number, this. Year of completion is 2018, and I know that there are 24 files. <clears throat> and I choose save. Here's where it gets complex and it freaks people out or throws them off. You now have to enter each and every photo title, okay? You can have up to 750 pictures. So you say new, you come here, and it will tell you how many photographs are in this line, because you may have to do this more than once. Maximum is 750, but notice this right here that I've highlighted. If you can see it on screen, I'll read it to you. For your photography titles, this box right here is limited to 1,995 characters. That's not much. I normally get 58 to 61 titles based on the length of my titles, right? So that's a problem if you're doing 750 pictures. If that's the case, it's a process. You're gonna copy all 750 names. You're gonna paste them in here and see it only takes one through 61. You're gonna make a mental note or write it down or highlight on the spreadsheet. We left off here. You're gonna submit those 51 and then do it again. You're gonna paste all 750 titles and delete the first 51 at the top that you already registered. Now you're starting at 52. It will prune it down to 1995 and you repeat that process. Let me show you a visual always helps. So here are the actual title names. I'm gonna copy these. I'm gonna pretend there's more than 24 because 24 won't work in the, the example that I'm gonna show you. So let's say that there's 24. I'm gonna paste it like six times, okay? Seven times. That's too many characters. I don't know how many pictures will fit within 1,995 characters, so I just click away and it will tell me you're over the character limit. Okay, it will prune it for me, but you have to be careful. This last line is incomplete. It cut it to a character count, not a title count. This should actually have an underscore 76 for the image number. It doesn't, so they truncated it. It, it could have done it where it was something like this you know, self H. Well, that's an incomplete name. I want to remove that. Okay. Now at that point, I have to figure out what to choose for the number. Here's how I do it. There's got to be an easier way, but I'm, I'm somewhat weird. So I'll put my cursor on the first line. That's one. And then arrow down two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, until I get to the end. And let's say that there are 61 images. I would then save it. Right. Boom, done. Now I've got 750, I only got 61. So I do it again. I choose new, I come in here, I've got my 750 titles, right? I pasted it six times again, but I know that I, let me get there. I know that I stopped on that one and I've already registered all of those, so I highlight those because I've made a note, which one I left off on, I delete them and I click outside. Oh, I'm still over. Okay. It truncates it again. I'm going to squeeze that box in. So there's one line here again, last picture it truncated. I don't want that. So I do that and then I count them and I repeat that process. Let's say here there's 56, right? I would repeat that process. And at the very end, if my original listing that first line, if it was 750 pictures, I'll go to each of the subsequent entries and add them up and make sure it equals 750. In this case, I'm gonna delete the two I just created because they are actually 
not the pictures I'm doing. Let's create a real one. I know for a fact it's 24 pictures. And I also know for a fact that they will all fit in there with no problem, no error. Save it. And there we go. Title of work being registered. There's going to be 24. The actual image titles, comma separated. There's 24. We're good to go. Click continue. This is where it gets so crazy easy. The first time you do this, you have to type everything. Once you've done it, there is an add me button. I'm the author. I'm Jimmy James Jameson today. I'm from the US. There's one box here though you gotta worry about, one drop down, this middle one. Is this author's contribution a work made for hire? If you don't understand work for hire, watch the first episode I did with the guys from the Copyright Zone in the summer of 2017. Go to BehindTheShot.tv, scroll back, you'll find it there. In my case, these were not work for hire, and you hit continue. Claimant, who's claiming copyright on this? Again, you could simply hit add me. If it's not in there yet, you would actually have to go in and enter your name, your address, your state, your country. Okay, so you really only need the ones with asterisks in them. Then you would save it. And it's not going to take it unless I fill it in. So let's add an address, West 5th in Jamestown, California. And it's in the U.S. There we go. Save. There it is, say continue. Next one is rights and permissions. This is contact information if somebody wants to reach out about the copyright. Fill it in again or hit add me. Email address, make sure you put that in so people can find you. Phone, alternate phone if you want. Address, city, state, and you finish the whole category and continue. Next one, same thing. Where do you want them to send correspondence? You've got an add me button or you can fill it in. And I'm only filling it in because I don't know what address it's going to use. And I don't want to throw my address out on the internet here. Address. There we go. Continue. Where do you want them to mail the certificate? And again, you're going to go ahead and do the same thing. And continue. Special handling. I would never use this unless something weird was happening, like you have pending litigation. It's very expensive to ask for special handling. So most of the time, you're just going to continue right past this. And this is really the last one. Certification, you have to certify that everything you've told them is true. Okay. And you put your name in. And this is an interesting one. The file name for the list of photograph titles. So remember, we're gonna upload two things later. We're gonna upload the zip file and we're gonna upload the PDF. So they want the file name of the PDF. So let's go grab that. Here's my PDF. I'm just gonna copy the title. I'm gonna paste it right in there. And if you want to, you can make sure it has the extension. Nobody really cares. I usually don't, but either one. And if you have any notes, you can put that in here too and you say continue. And this page is critical. Take your time. Make sure everything is in here correctly before you move on. And when you're done, you say add to cart. Once you add it to cart, here's what's going to happen. It's going to come back to you and it's going to say, okay, it's in the cart. Let's pay for it. It's $55 a batch, right? 750 images at the time of this recording. That could go up 
So always check and see what it is. Once you've paid, you will actually get to another screen for you to upload your assets. Now in uploading your assets, there are at least two things you're gonna upload. The PDF file that lists all the names and if it's published photos, also the publication dates, that should always be uploaded first. Then the single or multiple zip files that contain your thumbnails. Why would you have multiple? There are also file size restrictions. I've never hit it. Used to be you could, you know, register unpublished images 3000 in a batch and so you could hit that limit with 750. I don't see that happening. But in theory, if you couldn't upload a file, you can break it into multiple zip files so that the thumbnail zip files are smaller, okay? For me, I've always used one PDF and then one zip file and that kind of gets me through at that point. So once you're done with that, you're registered, you're done, and you are completely ready to go and make sure you come back into here and actually check the boxes and move them in the collections as necessary to mark them as having been registered so that you are keeping track and managing your data properly. Does that make sense to you? Hopefully so. There's no easy way for me right now to show you the actual payment or to show you the upload because you don't see the upload dialog box until after the payment, but it's fairly self-explanatory. The main thing that you wanna just keep in mind is that you have your files ready to go. Your folder of thumbnails, make sure that that's zipped and that you have your PDF ready. Now, I use the PDF. I do wanna stress that, remember those two templates that I showed you, the spreadsheets from the US Copyright Office, one for published and one for unpublished? You can actually just populate those with your data and send one of those in. You don't have to turn it into a PDF. It's just something that works right for my mind. But one way or another, you do have to get the file to them. So choose whichever method works for you. Now, there is one other thing that I want you to understand. As soon as you've uploaded your assets and click the complete button, that is the effective date of your copyright registration. You don't have to wait for somebody at the US Copyright Office to open and process your application. As soon as you complete it, it is effective. But there will be a point where the person at the copyright office, the case agent, reviews all of your files, processes them, and then sends you a registration certificate with a registration number on it. And that number is important. Now, it may take two, three, four months for you to get that. Again, effective date when you complete the application. But when you get that registration certificate and that registration number, that number is actually key because that's the number that you're gonna need and wanna use if you ever have to take action based on your registration. So up until now, we've tracked all of our assets. We've marked which assets are related to each other, both for our benefit and the case agent, by appending the actual case number to each and every folder or file. Again, you can look right here and see what I'm talking about. But once you get the registration number, the actual copyright certificate number, how do you add that to this so that you can track everything and which actual registration number it goes to? Well, here's what I do. These are all of our files that end in case number. If you look here, my root folder, I've actually changed the name. I still have it ending in case number and the case number, but then I append cert number and the certificate number. You could even go so far as to do the same thing to each and every asset file that you're dealing with. Just put an underscore, case number, underscore, and the actual, or excuse me, underscore, certificate number, underscore, and the actual certificate number that you get. And that way you can always look back and know what goes with what if you ever need to enforce your copyright. And that will pretty much finish your registration. There are a couple of notes I wanna make. First of all, what you've just seen is my workflow. It's what works in my head. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best way or the right way or anything like that. Your mileage may vary. So find a methodology that works for you that you can repeat easily and often so that you get your registrations done. I'll give you an example. I end up using the LR Transporter plugin in Lightroom. Why? Partially because when I first was catching up with my registrations and doing past years, and they were published images, but I didn't know the publication dates. So I decided to use the creation date of the images, which is in the metadata, as my publication date 
LR Transporter, that plugin made that really easy. I could export my files using that date structure and not have to try and figure out what date everything was published. Now, while I'm in Lightroom and I export all of my thumbnails, I then just export my metadata as a comma separated file. I open it in a spreadsheet program. Comma separated opened in a spreadsheet program creates individual columns. I format it the way I want, save it as a PDF, I'm done. It's just a workflow that makes sense to me. But as I mentioned, if you just want to use their spreadsheets and populate it with your data and send the spreadsheet and you can do that. You might go into Windows Explorer and copy the individual file names and paste them in or on a Mac program, go into a finder window and copy the file names and paste them into the text editor that's built into Mac OS called text edit on Windows. You could use Notepad, by the way, another good text editor on the Mac that can be free if if you don't need all the advanced features is BB edit is another good one. So there's a number of ways that you could do everything that I talked about. Find the one that works for you. And here's the most important part. Understand that copyright registration for your photos isn't hard. It doesn't take a lot of time and it doesn't cost a lot of money, but it's really, really important. That does it for this episode. I'm Steve Brazel, your host. If you want to reach out and find me, you can find me on Facebook for myself. It's Steve Brazel Photography, like the country Brazil, but two L's, or Behind the Shot Podcast. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, it's at Steve Brazel or at Behind the Shot TV. And last but not least, if you want to go check out any of the websites, my portfolio is stevebrazel.com or the website uh, for the podcast itself is BehindTheShot.tv, and I recommend that you go there for a couple of reasons. One, if you are a podcast listener, I've got all the subscribe links there that you'll need. But also, with each and every episode, I create a blog post that has all the important links in it. So for this particular episode, in the blog post, I'll have the LR Transporter link. I'll have links to the guys from the Copyright Zone and the book, their book. I highly recommend it sitting on the bookshelf behind me. So head to BehindTheShot.tv check out everything there make sure you find the blog post for this episode click any links that you want and as always reach out to me if you've got any questions again i'm steve brazel your host this is behind the shot the podcast where usually we try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots this was kind of a special episode to cover my workflow for copyright registration but we'll get back to normal soon thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time Thank you.